Welcome back to this week's midweek mini message brought to you by the Not Ashamed Biker Ministry. And if this is your first time, we welcome you as well. And we hope that you will continue to be with us each and every week to hear the message. Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father and His Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm the circuit rider bringing you this week's message of hope entitled, God will not give you more than you can handle. Or will he? I'm a chaplain through the Biker Bible Institute and also a biker evangelist with the Red Letter Riders. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm here to proclaim that to you today and, and each and every week. Now, before we get to the message for today, if you have any prayers that you would like to have lifted up, either for yourself or for someone else, there's a link below the video that you can click on and, and submit those requests. And, and we will read those and lift those up as the body of Christ to intercede for you. Also, feel free to comment below, ask questions, or just let us know who you are and where you're from. We'd love to hear from you. And if, if you'd love to, if you'd like to keep those comments away from the public eye, you can email me using the link also below the bottom part of this video. God will never, ever give you more than you can handle. Have you ever said this to a friend or family member who was going through a tough time in their life? Has anyone ever said it to you when you were faced with difficulties that were seemed unbearable? It sounds good. It's, you're trying to be helpful, but does it really comfort the person that truly has more trials on his plate than he or she can handle? The reality is, some people really do have more than they can handle. Sometimes the circumstances in our lives can be totally overwhelming. God, I just can't handle this anymore. I need help. And sadly, when some people feel like this, to get away from that state of intense emotional letdown, some people will turn to drugs, alcohol, or other outlets to make them temporarily forget their issues. But guess what? Those issues never went away. They come right back. Or actually, they never left. For some, it gets so bad that they take their own lives. If you find yourself in a state of mind that someone and someone says to you, pull up your bootstraps, don't worry, God won't give you more than you can handle, you may just want to do the unchristian thing and, and punch them right in the mouth. You see, hearing those words are not helpful at all. In fact, Many times they cause more harm than good. Hearing those words and being in such a depressing and discouraging situation will oftentimes make you feel as if you just don't measure up with everybody else because you know you can handle what you're in. These words only create more discouragement, more depression, and more downheartedness and dejection. Maybe God does give us more than we can handle. The fact of the matter is God never, ever said that he would not give us more than we can handle. And he actually told us the opposite in John 16 and 33. Jesus said this, In this world, you will have tribulation. No one, Christian or non-Christian, will avoid troubles in this life. I'll guarantee it. We all have troubles. Jesus himself faced trials and tribulations, so why shouldn't you have to face those? He suffered mocking, beatings, and a torture at the hands of the Jews just prior to his day at the cross. He was abandoned and betrayed by his closest followers. He was even denied by one of his closest friends. He was hung on the cross with spikes through his hand and his feet and suffered a most horrendous death. And yet, he tells us to take heart and assures us that he has overcome the world. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, he has claimed victory for us all. He has forgiven all of our sins and has defeated sin itself, which is Satan. And because of that, we should have no reason to fear anything in this world, nor any reason to be cast down by any tribulations that come our way. You see, Jesus has promised to be with us always, to never leave us, forsake us, no matter how bad it seems. He will see us through all the storms of our life. To me, that is what is comforting. Amen? That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, and insults, and hardships, and persecutions, and difficulties. For when I am weak, that I am strong. 
And that comes from Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. And then he says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 18, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. A pastor's wife named Debbie McDaniel puts it like this, and I quote, Through every trial and storm we encounter in life, God will use it to make a mark in this world. The troubles we walk through can bring glory to him. He will use our lives, the joys and faith we have, in spite of our problems, to draw others to himself and to help us to remember that what we see around us is not all there is. For he has more in store, and it is greater than we can ever imagine. Unquote. The trials in our lives hurt. They may hurt real bad. Our suffering at times may be totally overwhelming for us. And if you have ever experienced that, know that you're in good company. You see, the night before Jesus' horrific death on the cross, he cried out in the Garden of Gethsemane, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And you can find that in Matthew 21, 38. What he was saying is, God, Father, this is too much for me. What we need to learn and really get from this is it's okay for us to feel like life is too much for us to handle. And it's okay to cry out as Jesus did, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. You see, in doing this, you will find God. God who is in the flesh and the person of Jesus suffers right along with you. Through this, you will find the promise that God is faithful to meet us in our messes and our pain and sufferings. Do as Peter instructs us in 1 Peter 3, 5, 7 and 14. He says, cast all, your, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. God will give you more than you can handle, but not more than you can handle with him in your life if you trust in him. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. That's Psalm 50 verses 15. Jesus said, I have told you this. I have told you all this so that you may be have peace in me. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Believe in God. Believe in me also. As we remain in him, we will have our peace no matter what troubles that come our way. Trust in him. Amen. May God be with you and may God bless you here now and forever.